It's over 9,000! 9,000?! There's no way that can be right! What's up guys, Danielle with NeutralSupport.net bringing you a tech bulletin for the new Shimano Di2. So many of us haven't had it in our hands yet, but we will, and we know from previous generations that it will need firmware updates. We've gotten pretty comfortable with how to do that in the previous generations, but the new ones, it definitely changed. So we're going to go through how to connect this to this. So first, let's look at how the new Di2 actually works. So besides bumping up to 12 speed, the biggest deal for Shimano was taking a step towards a wireless system. Now just the baby step. So the shifters are the only wireless part and they communicate to the rear derailleur. So that's half wireless. So the shifters actually are powered by button cell batteries, which is really sounding pretty familiar. Anyway, without the cable connection to the derailleurs, it eliminates the junction box up top. So the junction box previously was used for a lot of different stuff. So it was used to charge your access to the battery. It was used to do the manual adjustment modes like on the fly you could actually adjust the shifting or change the shifting programming from the junction box. The last bit was that you could actually hardwire with your charger for firmware updates. Now with this current iteration that access points virtually eliminated. So the new generation the front and rear derailleurs are still hardwired to the battery but they are the only thing connected with e-tubes. Shimano actually created a charging hookup directly on the rear derailleur in place of the junction box so that you can charge directly. Now, if you're like me, or you're like some of my customers, or you're like these frustrated nameless people on the internet, you've been hardwiring for firmware updates to avoid the big bad brick. Using the eTube project app in the past with that WU111 little Bluetooth dongle, the connection was less than ideal. It was inconsistent, it would drop out. And if you were doing something like a firmware update, there was this thing that would happen where the firmware update would quit in the middle as the connection was lost and brick the whole system. So nothing would work, everybody would panic, and you had to hardwire in to fix it. The DI2 charger had been a super slick way to allow both us, the shops, and the consumers to actually access hardwiring without having to have something like a PCO2 or one of the diagnostic tools. But that's no longer the case. So I spoke with a Shimano tech representative about this. Press 2 if you are a consumer. Press 3 if you are a dealer. The charging port on the rear derailleur is strictly for charging now, so no data connectivity. He actually recommended using the wireless update function in the eTube app to do your firmware updates. Now I brought up the problems with that and what we've seen in the past, and he claims that the current system doesn't seem to have the same problems as the previous generation with communication attributing that to programming, but also that the rear derailleur is the communication port, so it doesn't have, it's not hidden, it's not far away, it's actually right on the outside of the frame. But even the tech rep that told me to do wireless updates admitted that there are times when you just have to hardwire and you don't have a choice. So hardwiring is necessary sometimes. Shimano designed a new cable for this generation of Di2, it's called the SD300. So it's like an SD50 if you left it in the dryer too long. It's really small, the connector is altogether different from the previous generation. If you look at the PC linkage device, your PCEO2, it actually still ends in an SD50, even the newest version. So that's going to be a problem because the derailleur has an SD300 port. Too small, the SD50 doesn't connect to it. So this system was definitely designed well and not the absolute last thing they thought about and backed into at all. Instead of updating the tool to just work, Shimano created a workaround that requires you to essentially build the tool yourself. To hardwire to the system, you're going to need to have five things. Six things. A computer running Windows, the PCEO2 tool, the EWAD305, which is a conversion adapter that attaches an SD300 to an SD50. You're going to need two additional SD300 cables and an EWJC304, which is a four port connector all four ports are the SD300 style. So once you build this mechanism, you can successfully hardwire to the system just like you used to, get into eTube project on your computer. But why so many pieces? Like, have we come far enough into the digital age that we will eventually no longer be able to hardwire at all? For this release, Shimano could not quite figure out the cockpit in time for TT bars, so it really just opted to clone the previous generation and work it back into the new system. It's a weird omission, so they use this system that is all SD50 cables to connect the shifters up at the front to a junction box, so just like the old stuff. 
Our new friend the AD305 comes into play because you actually run an SD50 to the converter and then you connect an SD300 from that to the battery. Astute observers will realize that's actually 100% hardwired as opposed to wireless. So in a weird turn of events, Shimano essentially turned their new wireless group set back into a fully wired group set, eliminating much of the cool factor that they worked so hard to create. I can't imagine this being the plan, so there must be an upgrade coming. So here's the gist. If you're not keen on being a cord cutter, you don't want to be caught off guard, just be sure to find this new handful of things that's necessary to hardwire to the new system. So we all know that these situations come up. We know the customers are going to bring the DI2 in, it's going to need firmware updates, so it's better to have this from the get-go than to try to be finding it after a bike shows up. Especially because parts like the AD305 are actually not even available yet, so Shimano claims they're going to be available very soon but I'd go ahead and get a back order in so that it shows up as soon as possible. So hopefully this tech bulletin helps you be prepared for when that customer brings in that sweet new DI2 and needs a firmware update. Companies aren't always the greatest at telling us what we need ahead of time, so hopefully I can bring that to you so that you can look like the hero that you are. If you want more tool bulletins or you like tool reviews or general bike mechanics stuff, subscribe to this sweet channel because that's all that it is. We also have a website, neutralsupport.net, that has the bike tool finder and other resources on it. Some cool stuff to check out. Like this video, comment below if you think I'm wrong or you have something to add because that's always helpful. People are always looking at the comments to get more information. Hope you guys have a good day.